This video is going to show you and remind you how to make a scatter plot and line of best fit and describe your relationship. Okay, so uh, this is one giant table just split into two tables. So this table shows 20 students, um, the number of hours they spent studying for their final exam, and they marked they received on their final exam. Okay, so first thing we need to do when we look at a table is decide what's the independent variable because that's going to go on the horizontal or the x-axis and which is the dependent variable that's going to go on the y-axis or the vertical um, axis. And a good little hint to you, uh, one of the most common things is to always put the form of time, okay, whatever measurement of time, whether we're talking about hours, days, weeks, years, on the horizontal, the vertical, that's your independent variable. One other little hint to you is that usually the first column or row in a table, so the study time, is should be the independent variable. I can't guarantee that that is 100% always true, but anything you see from me, that is 100% true. Okay, so let's go ahead and label our axes. We are going to have study time in hours. as the independent variable, and we are going to have exam mark, which is as a percentage, as the dependent variable. Also, you always want to give your scatter plot a title. Let's call it exams. You can call it anything you want. Now, if we look at our independent variable of study time, we notice that we have numbers sort of ranging from 0 um, to 10. And so we want to make sure we set our axis up correctly for that. So that one looks pretty easy. We can go 0. This will be 1. This is 2 hours, 4 hours, 6 hours, 8 hours, 10 hours. And that allows us to go a little bit beyond as well, which is nice. Okay. Try not to label every single box because the idea there is then it gets a little bit crowded. Now, for our dependent variable, things are a little bit more tricky. Uh, so again, you want to scan. Uh, 100 is obviously the highest. You're not really going to go higher than that, but that's okay. That's just for this particular example. And our lowest looks to be about 45. So one thing that you should have learned before is this idea of the little squiggle. Okay, good idea here to maybe jump. The lowest we have is 45, maybe go a little bit lower than that, maybe a mark of about 40. It's not to say you can't start at zero, but the more you spread out your data within the graph and use your space, the easier it will be to see the relationship. Okay, so I'm going to start out at 40 there, and I think then that works out really nicely to go up every two squares by 10. Does that work? Yes, that works. So that doesn't allow me to go beyond 100, but in this case, going beyond 100 doesn't matter. Um, you could always start right at the bottom with 40, and that would help, or you could have started at 45 as well, and that would be that scenario. So try to label your graph the same as mine on your piece of paper or your piece of graph paper or this printout, sorry. Um, and let's see if you can go ahead and plot all those points. Okay, I'm going to review just a couple of points to make sure you got this idea. I'm going to start with 10 and 100. So I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to go over to 10 on hours. And I'm going to go up to 100 and I'm going to make a nice big dot right there. Okay, my next one is 0, 50. So I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to go to 0 and up to 50 and get a nice big dot like that. One more. I'm going to do 160. So I'm going to do one right here and then go up to 60. Okay, so I want you to pause the video and I want you to plot all 20 of those dots. Okay, so take a look. You should have um, a scatter plot that looks something like that. And hopefully uh, that was clear to you. If you had any questions, you can definitely make note and come to office hours and ask me. Okay, and hopefully you can see that there is a relationship here, right? This relationship goes up to the right. We always look or think left to right and it's going up. Okay, and hopefully you remember learning that as what we call a positive correlation. If it was going down and to the right, that would mean a negative correlation if the trend was down to the right. Okay, so when we describe a relationship, we use two, we do two things. We first say what type of correlation it is. Uh, reminder, if the dots are scattered all over, then it's a no correlation. And then we also write the sentence, okay? And here's the sentence. 
as the, and we start with the independent variable first, so as the study time increases, okay, so that will always be the first sentence, as whatever the independent variable is increases, then the exam mark, and here you decide, is it increasing or decreasing? Here it's positive, so they're both increasing, so the exam mark also increases. Okay, and that's the sentence you need to be comfortable with. Okay, we can also draw a line of best fit, and hopefully you remember talking about this. Uh, rules here, you want to follow the trend of the data. That's number one. You do not have to go through the origin, and you want to just sort of place your line somewhere along the center here. Now, forgive me, it's a little bit hard to do this on my iPad where I'm making the videos, but you would have something like that, okay? No rules that it has to start at the la first point and the last point. You just want to make it follow the trend of the data. All of our line of best fits are going to be a little bit different, and that's okay. We're going to use that to answer questions, so our answers will all be a little bit different, but they should be close. Okay, so now I'm going to use my scatter plot to answer these questions and show you um, what we're going to do here. So we're going to use this line of graph of best fit in this graph to predict the following. So the first one is the mark of a student who studied for 6.5 hours. So what are we going to do? We're going to go to 6.5 hours. So you got to find that. That's right here. We're going to head up. It's good if you can use a ruler doing this. We're going to head up to our line of best fit and then we're going to head over to read out the mark. And here you just have to make sure you can read your scale. Um, hopefully you can see that that is somewhere between 75 and 80, so maybe about 77%, 78. Um, anywhere between about 75 and 80 is probably where you're at, depending on your line as well. But as long as you show your work on your line, you're good to go there. Okay, let's do the other one. It says how long a student studied if they received a mark of 85%. Okay, I'll do this one in yellow, so we're going to start at 85%, so we've got to find 85%. We're going to head over to our line of best fit. Looks like we're pretty close there to that point. Again, we're heading to the line, not to the data, and then we're going to just read off our graph, and it looks like we're around eight hours. Uh, if you set a little bit more than eight hours, that would be great as well. We'll say approximately eight hours of study time, okay? And both of these questions are what are called interpolation. You might remember that name. It's not that important that you remember the name, but those are questions that we ask within the data. So I asked you about things within the data. If I asked you a question, hey, what if a student studied, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, 15 hours, that would be outside of the data, and that would be a question that is called extrapolation, okay, just so that you have that word. That's not so important in grade 10 math, but I just wanted you to know that, okay? So that gives you a brief idea on how to make scatter plots. What I would like you to do now is definitely try one or two on your own. Thank you.